Hello everyone, Dr. Mad here. Let's get mad about poetry. So in this video, we are going to look at Remains, 2008, by Simon Armitage. This poem is about the effects of war. It describes an incident based on real life which has left the soldier with PTSD. This was during the invasion of Iraq in 2003, when the soldiers had to then also act as police as society broke down. Soldiers are not trained to act as police and tend to overreact for this reason. So there's Simon Armitage, interesting abstract painting. Simon Armitage was born in 1963 in Yorkshire, England. He's still going strong. His poetry is in tune with modern life and everyday language. So that's really important. He does use very simple, straightforward language. And he's a very contemporary poet, a very modern poet. In 2019, Armitage became Poet Laureate of Great Britain. And that's interesting because of this reason here, the fact that he is contemporary, he uses everyday language. He's not like most of the other poets in the anthology who became poet laureates, who went to Oxford and Cambridge and were kind of upper class and all that. He wrote his first poem as a school assignment. And as I mentioned, he went to Portsmouth University rather than Oxford and Cambridge. And he worked as a probation officer but then his poetry took off and he was able to write full time. So again, there you can see his unusual working class background. OK, so you can see there that he does use quite straightforward language because the glossary for the poem is very short. And Two of the words are kind of similar, really. So looters, a thief during a war or riot and raiding, quickly stealing something. And patrol to walk around to monitor things. So this is what these soldiers are doing. So this is just a random picture, but there are some looters. And the main techniques he uses are slang and strong enjambment. OK, but he uses these other techniques as well. OK, so we're going to listen to the poem, but this audio version is a little bit different. It's read by the actual soldier who had this incident, but it's not just a straight reading. In between the readings, he kind of makes comments, explains things, and there are moments of silence. Because it's a video where you can see his face, but obviously in the audio version, you won't see the face, but just be aware that there may be some pauses. And when those pauses happen, I might give some commentary to fill those gaps in. On another occasion, we get sent out to tackle looters raiding a bank. And one of them legs it up the road, probably armed, possibly not. Well, myself and somebody else and somebody else are all of the same mind, so all three of us open fire, three of a kind, let him fly, and I swear I see every round as it rips through his life, I see broad daylight on the other side. In, in total I think it took 12 rounds, and I, I can still to this day remember as every round passed through, and he was lying there with his inside's basically on the floor. And we had to leave him, clear the bank. And he was uh, approximately four storeys high, four or five storeys. And we cleared the entire of the bank, the bank got, to the, got the to the roof. I looked over. over. The bloke was That's still there, the crying in agony. We come back down. And uh, another lad who was in my section literally picked his insides up dropped them back into his body and he was uh, he was just chucked into the back of the warrior never to be seen again so we've hit this looter 
a dozen times and he's there on the ground sort of inside out writhing in pain screaming in agony end of story except not really his blood shadow stays on the street and out on patrol who were right over him week after week That's the first time I, I'd ever ended someone's life. I didn't have time to think. It was over in seconds, like, done. But to this day, there ain't a day that goes by that I don't go through that whole situation in my head. Then I'm home on leave, but I blink, and he bursts again through the door of the bank. Sleep, and he's probably armed, possibly not. Dream, and he's torn apart by a dozen rounds, and the drink of the drugs won't flush him out. He's here in my head, when I close my eyes, dug in behind enemy lines, not left for dead in some distant sun-fucked stone age land, or six feet under in desert sand. But nearer the knuckle, here and now, his bloody life in my bloody hands. Okay, so you can see that it was the actual soldier and he missed bits out and he didn't actually read the poem exactly as it is but that's okay i think that was quite a, a useful thing to do to listen to that version so hopefully the actual meaning of the poem is fairly clear what's happening in the poem so there are these soldiers they are now the invasion is actually over the war is kind of over and the soldiers are now acting as police because society has broken down. There's no police. There's no Iraqi police. So the British soldiers are acting as the police. So it starts off with on another occasion. So notice it's the casual attitude, no dates, no time. Okay. So they sent out to tackle these looters who are raiding the bank. And notice the use of slang. One of them legs it up the road which means to run fast, okay? But it's slang. And notice this line is really important. The soldiers don't check, don't wait to see if the looters ha have guns or not, okay? And then notice here, somebody else and somebody else. So again, the casual attitude, this is serious. Uh, these are soldiers, professional soldiers, acting as police. They should have the exact date, time, names of the people involved. There's none of that. And notice they're all thinking the same, which is what soldiers are like. They are trained not to really think as individuals. They're trained to follow orders. Okay. And all of them start shooting without checking. Yeah. And notice the stang again, letting fly. In other words, shooting. And then here notice the strong enjambment. And he sees the bullets ripping through the Luther's body and they shoot him so many times that they can see literally see daylight through his body they can see through his body and onto the other side and they shoot him 12 times a dozen times now you're not meant to do that even so if you're police or soldiers or whatever you only shoot enough to put the person down so that they're not a threat. So this was obviously way beyond necessary. And so now the looter is on the ground. So remember that this probably wouldn't have been a professional bank robber or anything. It's just that society has broken down and probably these people have nothing to eat, no money, nothing. So most of them would have been acting out of desperation. I mean, obviously, some of them would have just taken advantage of the situation. But the fact is that the soldiers don't know. So they have a duty to 
be a bit constrained, but but they're not. And obviously the Luto is lying there in agony. I mean, this is just a random picture, by the way, both of these, okay? And then he says, one of my mates. So, but these are not mates. These are soldiers. These are colleagues, professional soldiers, okay? They're not three mates out for a laugh and tosses his guts back into his body. So he's, as the soldier described, his insides, the Luto's insides have literally come out. They put them back into the body and then again the stank carted off in the back of a lorry. Well, this should be an ambulance. And then end of story, except not really. What that means is that, yes, the incident is over, but the effects of it, the consequences, the mental, physical consequences are just starting. So firstly, the blood shadow, so the blood stain really that should be, this is metaphorical language here, stays on the street and when they go out on their patrols, which means to go out to monitor what's going on, they pass it, they will go past it every week after week. So in other words, for weeks, nobody cleans the blood. So that shows how society has broken down, basic services have broken down. And then the soldier comes home on leave, on holiday, but every time he blinks, every time he sleeps, he sees this incident. So in this case, the Luther is running out of the bank and notice here sleep, dream. So whether he's blinking or sleeping or dreaming, whatever, or having nightmares more likely. And notice the repetition of this that they didn't check. And by now they would have known probably what well, they, they would have known by now whether the soldier had a gun or not. Okay, they would have seen it. And he sees the guns going into his body. And obviously here we can see he started drinking and taking drugs. But no matter what he does, it doesn't help. So obviously this is metaphorical language. Yeah, it, The drink and the drugs don't flush him out. Don't get rid of the thoughts in his head and the nightmares. He's constantly there in his head. Every time he closes his eyes, dug in behind enemy lines. So this is obviously a metaphor. The enemy lines are his his eyes, his brain, or behind his forehead, behind his eyes. He hasn't been able to just leave him back there. And this, here, this we've got alliteration. Now, alliteration normally is just to emphasize the point being made. But here, very, very clever use of alliteration by Armitage. Sun, stunned, sand, smothered. Notice how I had to really slow down there, how difficult these words are to say. So... Usually alliteration is actually makes something easier to say, but in this case, it's making it harder. And that is reflecting the fact that he can't get these thoughts out of his head, out of his mind, in the same way that whoever's reading this poem can't get the words out. You have to slow down, just like I had to there. He hasn't been able to just bury him in the sand or in Iraq. And then notice these last two lines separate. So all these stanzas, there's seven stanzas of four lines each. So in that sense, quite regular. But then these last two lines to stand out. I mean, this is kind of metaphorical language here. But here we have repetition again. And the word bloody has many meanings. It can be used as a swear word, mild swear word. It literally means to do with blood. And here it's also metaphorical. His hands are bloody. He's guilty. Okay. Okay. So hopefully that makes it fairly clear what was happening in the poem, poem and the effects of it. The effects of the incident. So A01, to be able to read, understand and respond to the poem using quotes and references. Plenty of quotes there. More than you need. You only need four to six quotes. And then here we have the technique, so please pause the video and make sure you understand why I've given these examples for these techniques. And then AO2, language, form and structure, using techniques and terminology. So language means words and phrases. What are the effects of those words and phrases? What are the thoughts, feelings, images that come to your mind, to your heart? connotations, 
the alternative meanings of a word, for example, the word bloody that we just looked at. So here are some possible quotes that you could look at, three random ones from the previous slide. In terms of form and structure, the poem is not of a specific form. We know this poet is a modern contemporary poet. It doesn't have a rhyme or rhythm scheme. It's basically free verse. But there is a physical and logical structure to it. There are these seven stanzas of four lines each, plus a final stanza of two lines. So we talked about that just now. So in this sense, there does seem to be some sort of a regular structure which may reflect the fact that even war should have rules, but the lack of rhyme or rhythm may show that this order has broken down. And the poem begins by describing the central incident, continues on with the immediate aftermath. The aftermath means the what happens straight afterwards. Okay, uh, For example, the blood shadow and the fact that it doesn't get cleaned for weeks, and then ends with the long-term effects, the mental effect, effects, the mental health, PTSD. And then techniques and terminology. Armitage uses a number of techniques, but especially slot, slang and strong enjambment. And then that, that one incident of really clever alliteration. And then in terms of context, some good points to make would be as follows. The fact that it's based on a real incident. We have the actual soldier's testimony. So the testimony means the witnessing when the person says what happened. And it's about the consequences of invading another country without a plan. And the fact that these things affect not just the people living in that country that's being invaded, but also the soldiers that are invading, the invading soldiers, and obviously their families as well. So it goes both ways. It's not just one way. Okay, so you have now learned more than enough to get a grade four or five depending on how you write your essay. Here is a quiz to test your understanding so far. So please pause the video here and have a good go at these questions. I'm going to move to the answer slide in three seconds. Three, two, one. So here are the answers. Please make sure that you check them. If you really struggled, you need to go back and listen again. You need to be aiming for at least 50%, but really 70, 90, 100%. I'm going to move on in three seconds. Three, two, one. So you might get a question like this. How does the poet present the effects of war in Remains compare with one other poem in the anthology? We're not going to do that. But you could compare with Poppies, for example, where the effect is on the mother, isn't it, of the death of her son. And in a way, you could say she's suffering from kind of PTSD. I mean, it's not quite the same thing, but she's suffering the effects of conflict, whereas here the effect is on the soldier himself. In that case, it can't be on the soldier because the poor boy is dead. You could also compare with kamikaze, maybe, where it's opposite, where the kamikaze pilot chose not to carry out the mission and therefore didn't suffer PTSD in that sense, but did suffer from the guilt and the shame and being cut off from his family. Okay, so, I mean, the poem you compare with will, to a certain extent, depend on the question that you're given. I mean, you should have two or three poems in mind, one main poem and then one or two backup poems before you go into the exam as to which poem you're going to compare with, okay? So you might start something like this. The poet presents the effects of war by describing how a specific incident left the soldier suffering from PTSD. The poet uses techniques such as slang to do this. And then your point would be, or might be, the poem begins by describing how the incident started and uses the phrase, one of them legs it up the road. This is slang for running away fast after having done something bad. But this would normally be used for something like school children running away from a prank. So a prank is like a little trick or naughty thing that somebody does. Here we are talking about looters who are going to be shot dead and this is going to leave the soldier permanently scarred mentally. So the use of slang is not really appropriate, but obviously the poet is using it deliberately yeah, to have an effect. Sometimes a casual attitude or a casual tone, informal tone 
for something serious can work more effectively. The, the difference, the, the contrast, the juxtaposition can work more effectively than having the same tone and mood. But that's, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so about four paragraphs like that, plus an introduction and conclusion and a bit of context would be more than enough to get a grade four or five. If you're aiming higher, let's continue. So in terms of tone and mood, obviously a very casual tone, use of slang, but the mood created clearly is very, very serious. So the this difference is very effective in what the poet, poem, poet is trying to achieve. And then in terms of rhyme and rhythm, if you read out the words, you'll find there's no rhyme. And in terms of rhythm, just looking at the lines, you can see they are totally different lengths. So that tells you there's no rhythm. But so that maybe obviously reflects the chaos of war and the fact that the poet is a very modern contemporary poet. But in terms of the structure, we mentioned this earlier, there is a very ordered structure. These seven stanzas or four lines each and then plus these last two lines. So there again, there's a contrast. So on the one hand, just like the tone and the mood, there's a contrast between the lack of rhyme and rhythm, but a very strong physical and logical structure. In terms of language, I mean, the language is very straightforward, as we know, but you might want to look at, think about these quotes here. So blood shadow, the use of metaphorical language there, and also this line here and the use of alliteration. So I discussed that earlier. If you can write that and discuss that in writing, those would be higher grade things to do. Sorry. Um, and then in terms of context, so we've talked about the consequences of invading a country without having a plan as to what's going to happen afterwards when if society breaks down, the consequences of soldiers acting as police, which they're not really trained to do, and the fact that there will be effects on not just the, the people in the country being invaded, but also the soldiers of the invading country, and then obviously on their families. So the effects are on both sides. It's not just one way. Okay, so here is the advanced quiz. Please pause the video here and have a good go at these questions. I'm going to move to the answer slide in three seconds. So three, two, one. Here are some possible answers. If you struggle, you need to go back and listen again. But if you've got most of this, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. And anything else that you didn't get, you can learn that now. Okay, so I'm going to move to the answer. Sorry, I'm going to move on to the next slide now in three seconds. Three, two, one. So you have now learned more than enough for a grade six or seven. Such a paragraph might look like this. So up to here is the same as before. And then I've added this. The poem is based on a real incident and we have the soldier's direct testimony and the fact that he received no help or support when he reported this. So this is from that video that we listened to. If you just search for remains on YouTube, you'll find that video. It's actually a bit longer than the bit that we listened to, so it's really worth listening to. The poem shows that it is not only the people of the invaded country who suffer, but also the soldier, soldiers of the invading country. Furthermore, the poem raises questions as to whether one country should invade another, albeit with allegedly good intentions. So albeit is literally three words in one. Albeit means even if. yeah, And the consequences of doing so without a plan as to what will happen after the war itself is over. So this is about the Iraq war. If you're aiming for the highest grades, which we'll talk about in grade eight, nine in a minute. Actually, we'll talk about that in a minute. So yeah, so about five or six paragraphs like that with an introduction and conclusion and context interwoven in would be more than enough for a grade six or seven. And then if you're aiming for the highest grades, in terms of, I mean, the language is fairly straightforward, okay? So you're going to have to work a bit harder to make your high grade points. But these two quotes you could definitely look at for the highest points. The use of alliteration here, 
and, and the reason for it, the effect of it, and this quote here, phrase here, the metaphor here, and then the use of slang and the lack of form, but alongside quite a strong structure, the effect of that, why the poet you think may have done that. And then you may want to just research the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Not too much because this is not history, it's English. But yeah, just a little bit. And to discuss whether countries should interfere in other countries. And what we're saying here about the consequences can be both ways. And the lack of mental health support for soldiers, that kind of thing. Which has improved recently, but when this poem, when the soldier was talking, he was saying that there was no support. So all those things would be high grade points to do. And then, remember not to go overboard with the context, okay? Focus on the language, form and structure. Once you put your head around all that, you could complete the essay we've started. How does the poet present the effects of war in remains? And that's it. I hope you found that video useful. And if you did, please do subscribe and tell all your friends about it. And I will see you in the next video for the next poem.